with our five-year investment time horizon and having been around this block a, a number of times, uh, we know they're going to come to a deal. Uh, they are not going to deprive employ, uh, government employees of their paychecks, Social Security, uh, so retirees of their pay paychecks. It'd be politically disastrous as we're heading into this election year, and, and already the field has heated up so, so significantly. So they're going to get through this. Uh, it's a very short-term phenomenon. It might be a short-term fix. Uh, and hopefully they do get serious about this at some point in time, but we don't think now is the time. Following the chipmaker's spectacular year-to-date increase of more than 160%, Kathy Woods, ARK Invest, is certainly wishing it hadn't sold roughly 1 million shares of NVIDIA between early October and this month. As a result of the company's jaw-dropping guidance and the surge in demand for its chipsets, which power generative AI technology platforms like OpenEyes, ChatGPT, and Alphabet's Bard. NVIDIA's stock shot up as much as 30 on Thursday. However, the active investment manager, who had owned NVIDIA on and off since the flagship fund's establishment in 2014, missed out on significant gains as it began to pare down its holding just as NVIDIA was about to hit a 52-week low in the middle of October. The stock has increased 190% and the market value of NVIDIA by $620 billion since ARK Invest's initial sell on October 5th when it held 1.3 million shares of the company across all of its ETFs. NVIDIA has little over 500,000 shares of the business as of late November. Just 390,000 shares of ARK Invest's suite of next-generation technology ETFs are held by the company at the moment. Its flagship destructive innovation fund does not include a stock. Insider estimates indicate that when ARK Invest sold down its NVIDIA holding at the end of last year, it missed out on possible earnings worth more than $200 million. In this video, Kathy discusses her NVIDIA investment and explains why she doesn't believe selling her stake in the company was a wholly bad move. She speaks about her extremely high expectations for Tesla and the reasons it is currently the best play. She also discusses the American economy and its deflationary situation. Don't forget to click the like button, subscribe, and enable notifications as you watch. Very positive on NVIDIA. We have been very positive on NVIDIA. We bought it down when it hit nearly $100 uh, in the fourth quarter last year. Uh, and, and then it tripled as some of our other uh, AI-oriented stocks stood still. So, uh, you know, we're looking at, believe it or not, many people do not believe this about us. We're looking at relative valuations of uh, names in the AI space. And we were looking at uh, NVIDIA at 25 times sales, which is where it is. And Tesla, which is probably the biggest AI story out there, is at six times earnings. UiPath yesterday, uh, I mean, not earnings, six times sales. UiPath yesterday uh, reported it is a beautiful AI play. It too is at six times sales. And as far as NVIDIA goes, there are a few reasons we uh, we take some pause. It, it still meets our minimum hurdle rate of return, so 15% at a compound annual rate over five years. And so you'll see it in some of our more specialized portfolios. Yeah. Uh, we're we're looking for uh, the better values, but the, the risks to uh, NVIDIA would include cyclical. When I hear shortages, shortages, shortages about GPUs or anything, I begin to think about, um, about the cyclicality of a group. Uh, competition, Tesla is coming up with its own chip, uh, Meta Platforms, Google, their own chips. Uh, for more specialized large language models. Uh, and, and then the tech itself, we're learning from meta platforms, the Llama model uh, is able to do with less computing power, but more data, yeah. uh, it's able to deliver better models. So there are puts and takes here as there always are. People who understood the NVIDIA story, we were pounding the table on it on 2014, you know, really till 2021. Uh, um, and many people actually put it into their portfolios, their own portfolios, and they may have held it. We have not gotten uh, much pushback. And the reason is people know uh, that we are on we are on AI, but we're doing it in a little bit of a differentiated way. NVIDIA has become a check the box stock. That's why the valuation is where it is. 
Um, uh, but we are looking for those plays uh, that have not only the, the vision from management team point of view and broad distribution, but also proprietary data and AI expertise. So uh, we're just pivoting to another set of plays that most people have not discovered yet, yeah. much like they did not understand that NVIDIA was an AI play really until very recently that we believe uh, Tesla is building. Uh, it has more data, talk about proprietary data. It has more data on of real world driving miles than all of the other auto companies and technology companies like Waymo put together around the world, we would say, except for perhaps China, because we don't know exactly what's going on there. Uh, and we do believe that the autonomous taxi platform opportunity is a winner take most opportunity opportunity, the company that gets a person in an autonomous vehicle from point A to point B as quickly as and safely as possible yeah. is probably going to get the lion's share of the market. And that company will, in the United States, uh, we believe, be Tesla. And we believe globally that opportunity will scale from zero today to eight to ten trillion dollars in revenues uh, by 2030. Uh, so you can see See why we're so excited by Tesla. It is um, it is the furthest advanced from an AI point of view, and it's even becoming a manufacturer of factories um, using artificial intelligence and becoming more and more and more efficient in manufacturing uh, factories and and cars. Uh, we think it's the most efficient in the world right and now. Our history with China after COVID was we plowed in during COVID because we liked what China was doing from a monetary and fiscal point of view. They were they were not overdoing it. Uh, and then, of course, we entered the period starting in November of 20, uh, where, you know, managements were basically banished from their companies and there were, were there was one restriction and regulation after another. And so we've pulled away quite significantly. Uh, common prosperity, uh, it seems, uh, means very low profit margins. Uh, and uh, uh, services that reach into tier one, tier two cities. So uh, uh, JD Logistics uh, and, and JD, we, we have some of that, but um, we have minimized our exposure until, until uh, China basically uh, seems more inviting to capital once again. When history books are written, we'll look back at this period and we'll see the sharp rise in inflation, uh, which was caused caused by massive supply chain, really supply shocks from COVID and the war in Ukraine. And you will see, so sharp increase, and it feels like it's so slowly coming down. But when the charts, when you start looking at these charts in history, this decline will be look very like it was very rapid, and we will descend into deflationary ter territory. Uh, Don Luswin wrote a, a, a piece, uh, it was an editorial in the Wall Street Journal, I believe, uh, about this, and I think the Fed, uh, is going to be blamed for sending us into a deflationary period. Already we're getting negative uh, signs for guidance. Home Depot, its same store sales down three to five percent for the year now they're expecting. We got uh, uh, GDI, which is the other side. So global, I mean, uh, uh, gross domestic income, which is the other side of gross domestic product, and they need to equal, but they're at a record gap right now. It's been negative, so in recession territory for the last two quarters. Uh, and I think many companies are going to feel a hard landing and it's going to come both from units and prices. Uh, I think more and more companies are reporting this on their earnings yeah. report. These these uh, economic statistics that take all the oxygen out of the room are hugely lagging and they're not even getting it right. If you look at the digital world, gross domestic product was that statistic was devised in the industrial age. We're in the digital age right now. Yeah. So we pay more attention to gross domestic income, which tends to be more accurate as we're seeing these inconsistencies despite the fact that there are a lot of funds working against ARK Invest, who they accuse of leaving too soon and making poor choices. 
It is still challenging to manage a portfolio of investments whose primary goal is to cause damage. Tesla furthermore has a lot of potential. How would you feel about Tesla stock costing $2,000 per share by 2027? In the comment space below, please share your ideas. Please remember to subscribe, hit the like button, and enable notifications. Many thanks for tuning in.